Hi, this is Stuart Weems, and thanks for listening to the Investopoly podcast. My goal is to give you simple, easy to understand insights, strategies, and tips to help you master the game of building wealth. What I'd like to talk to you about in this episode is the typical life cycle of an investment strategy. That is, what assets should you invest in in what order, depending on your age and stage of life? It's a common question that I get faced with with clients. I know I want to invest in something, but I'm really not sure what. Well, there's a typical life cycle. And in the show notes, I've got a link to a video that I've put together, which gives you a bit of a graphic to sort of set this out for you. So the first thing that people need to do when starting out the investment journey is get into property first. The reason why property works really well is because most of its return is delivered to you in capital growth rather than income, and that's for investment grade property. I've got a a separate episode on investment grade property as well. So the reason investment grade property works for younger people is typically because they what they need to do first is build, build their asset base. They don't want any more income. What they need to do is build their net worth. There's only two ways that they can do that. They can invest in prop, in assets that provide compounding capital growth or they can save after-tax dollars. And saving after-tax dollars is really difficult. It's slow, takes a lot of time, particularly as people on their low income. So the best way that they can do that is to invest in an asset that provides most of its return in capital growth, and obviously that's property. Then next, in their 30s and 40s, what they're going to want to do is probably buy a family home and then potentially upgrade that family home as their family expands. They get married, start having kids, those sorts of things. So they should be doing that concurrently, but at the same time continuing their property investment journey. And the reason they want to, you, it's important to do that as soon as possible, so as young as possible, is that property takes time to work. You know, you hold a property for 20 or 30 years, you'll do really well out of it. Um, however, you, you don't really make a lot of money in, say, the first five years because the compounding capital growth hasn't really kicked in yet. So you want to spend your 30s and possibly even into your 40s building a property portfolio or a good sound asset base in in property. Uh, The consequence of that, however, is that you'll probably have a reasonable amount of debt exposure. So then what you need to do after you've acquired those properties is spend a first few years of five to 10 years just um, trying to reduce debt. So that's putting as much cash flow in offset accounts and so forth as possible. That reduces your debt exposure and interest exposure, but it also builds financial buffers. After that amount of time, you're probably getting close into your sort of late 40s or even early 50s, by which time you've held those property assets for a reasonable period of time and your loan to value ratio will start becoming quite conservative. And you've got um, cash flow buffers in offset accounts and so forth. So then that's when you need to start turning your attention to super and maybe other investments like investing in low-cost index funds in your personal name and so forth. But certainly as you get into your 50s, that's when you should start maximising super contributions if your cash flow allows it. Um, As you start approaching 60, you want to start thinking about the mix of assets that you have and you want to start concentrating on getting more income. So you can either do that through changing the mixture of assets, so going closer to, say, commercial property and further away from residential property, or even with your super investments, you can start investing in income-style investments like bonds or high dividend-paying shares and these sorts of things. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview of the typical lifestyle, uh, life cycle, I should say, of investment strategy. As I said, in the show notes below, I've got a link to a video which sort of walks you through that at a bit of a, a slower pace. But in short, buy property in the beginning, build a property portfolio, spend a little bit of time consolidating your um, uh, financial position and reducing your debt exposure, and then start thinking about shares and super and so forth after you've got that that sound footy in property first. And that's really a good way, a nice, easy way to build wealth. I hope that's been helpful. Bye for now.